live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage, exclusive coverage of Samsung Developer Conference, SDC 2017. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of Slavangle Media. Our next guest is Patrick Moorhead, who's the president and principal analyst at More Insights and Strategy, friend of theCUBE. We see him everywhere we go. He's quoted in, in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, all the top uh, publications. And today was just on Power Lunch on CNBC, <laughs> here for our Power Cube segment. Welcome to theCUBE, good to see you again. Hey, thanks for being here, and I appreciate uh, you, know, you putting up with me uh, heckling you from outside of theCUBE. Always great to have you on, hard hitting. You're one of the best analysts in the business. We know you work hard. Uh, we see you at all the events that we go to. I got to get your take, Samsung. Obviously, now see you run Power Launch on one of Amazon. Obviously winning in the cloud. Samsung downplaying their cloud, but calling about smart things. I get that. Yeah. Their cloud is kind of fragmented. They're kind of trying to hide the ball there. I get that. But they talk about IOT, which you got to talk about cloud without IOT. What's your analysis of Samsung? Yeah, so, so first off, Samsung is a collection of really, really successful stove-piped companies, right? You have displays, you have semiconductors, you have mobile phones, you have all these different areas, and uh, you know, they say a lot of times, your strength is sometimes your weakness, and the divisions just don't talk a whole lot. But what they did, and this is the first time I've seen this in a long time, is they got on the same page and said, you know, we have to work together because uh, IOT and connected and, and intelligent connectedness can't be done in stovepipes. We can't all go do uh, our thing. So they're agreeing on standards, they're yeah. doing some really good stuff. Yeah, and also we know from the cloud game, obviously now go back to the enterprise, it's more consumer backing in from the edge, obviously the edge being devices and other things. I get that, but now, the, the horizontally scalable nature of the cloud is the holy grail. We've seen Amazon's <laughs> success continue to boom. They're, they're, they do more compute than any other cloud, I think, combined. I think maybe beside Google with their internal cloud. That horizontal resource pool, serverless is an right. trend, IOT, you got to have the stovepipes got to be decimated. However, you yeah. need specialism at the application level. That's exactly right. And um, a, a smartphone will act a little bit differently from a camera, which would be different from a refrigerator, as we saw, right? Uh, Samsung wants uh, the new meeting area to be, well, not the new meeting area, we all meet in the kitchen, but the connected meeting area. So they all act differently. So they have to have, uh, even though they're different devices, they have to connect into that horizontal cloud to make it a efficient enough yeah. uh, and effective enough for good responsiveness. And I like the message of smart things. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, I like that because it connects their things, which are consumer things. Right. And, they, and people like them. Like you said, very successful stovepipes. The question that I ask here, and I try to get the execs to talk about it, but they weren't answering it, and I think it's by design. They're not talking about the data. Yeah. Because again, at the end of the day, what's different from Alibaba <laughs> again last week when I was in China, right. they're very upfront. We're all about data acquisition and using the data to fuel the user experience. Right. That has to traverse across right. stovepipes. So is Samsung baked in that area? Are they have things going on? What's your analysis of data traversal across? Yeah. Is Bixby 2.0 the answer? So uh, companies have to take, particularly consumer companies related to the cloud, have to have one or two paths. The one that says we're not going to mine personal data to either sell you products or, or run ads, so uh, Facebook, uh, AWS and even Google, that's their business model. And then the other side, you have people like Apple who are only going to use the data to make the products and experiences better. I think what may, I'll just pontificate here, the reason you're not getting a straight answer is I don't think they know exactly what they want to do yet. Because uh, look at the market cap of Facebook, Apple, and even AWS is, sorry, Amazon is planning to, to start and expand their own ad network. Yeah. So, I just don't think they know yet. Now, uh, what I would recommend to them is... Or they might not have visibility on it, product-wise. Yeah. So there's knowing what to do, yeah. or how to do it, versus the product capability. Well, they have mentioned. access to a ton of data. So if you're using Samsung Mail, if you're using, uh, they, they know every uh, application gets deleted, uh, usage models of those applications. Um, so 
they know a lot more than I think people yeah. think. They have a lot more data than people probably give them credit yeah, so for. So they're going to hide the ball. I think they should, they're buying more time. I would agree with you there. All right, question on um, uh, IoT. Do yeah. you think that hangs together, that strategy? Obviously security updates the chip level, that's one thing. Um, can they succeed with IoT in this yeah. emerging stovepipe collapse yeah. fabric that they're bringing out? So I need to do a little bit more research on, on the security and also their scalability. Because if you're going to connect billions of devices, you have to have scalability. We already saw what GE Predix did, right? Yeah. They did an about face and partnered up with AWS, realizing they, they just couldn't handle the scale and the complexity. And the second thing is the security model and how things like ARM Embed Cloud and uh, the latest uh, announcements from Intel, which is how from a gateway perspective you secure this work. So, I have to go do some research yeah, on and this. Yeah, and by the way, it's a moving train. You mentioned the GE thing, great example. I mean, let's take that for example. I got to ask you about cloud because let's talk about Amazon, Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry became this, this <laughs> thing and Pivotal tried to take it and shape it. You know, they're claiming huge success. Yeah. Some are questioning the numbers. What, I mean, yeah. they're you know, claiming victory on one hand. I hear record, record, yeah. record but I just don't see any cloud on Cloud Foundry out there. Yeah, and I think the reason is, you know, uh, PCF, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, is a Fortune 500 thing, right? And if I compare Fortune 500 to startups and, and, other, and other people, there's not nearly as much activity uh, in the Fortune 500 as there is with the startups and the cloud native companies. So, yeah. uh, I'm optimistic. So you're saying Pivotal Cloud is more Fortune 500, less cloud native. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How about Amazon? What's your take? I know you were on Power Launch, now you're on the Power right. Cube, uh, our new segment that you just invented by being here. <laughs> um, what is the Amazon take? Is that reInvent's coming up? What's the preview? Obviously, we're going to have some one-on-ones with Jassy and the team beforehand. The Cube will be there with two sets. Right. You should come on if you're going to be there. I'd love, love to have to. you on. Again, what's the preview for AWS reInvent? Yeah, so AWS, right, they had a seven-year head start on almost everybody, and then, uh, Azure and GCP just recently jumped in, and if you notice over the past year, they've been firing cannons at each other. Uh, one vendor says, hey, I do by the minute pricing, and then another one says, oh, I have the by the second pricing, <laughs> right? And, oh, I'm going to uh, accept VMware. Oh, no, I'm not doing VMware, I'm doing SAP. So what you have now is, is a feature fest uh, and a, a fist fight now. Uh, AWS is no longer uh, the only man standing here. So what I'm expecting is they are going to come in and make the case that, okay, we still are the best choice not just for IaaS, but also for PaaS, okay? Um, because they have a lot of competition. And also, I think they're going to fill in gaps in some of their regional services where, oh, they don't have GPUs in a certain country. Oh, I don't have FPGAs over here. I think they're going to fill that in uh, to, to look better against GCP and, and Azure. I know you cover Intel as well. I was just over there, I saw some of the folks there. I saw some of the Linux Foundation folks. Yeah. Obviously you're seeing Intel being more of a computing company, not a chip company anymore. Right. They have that 5G end-to-end. -end. You came on Mobile World Congress, talked a little bit about 5G. End-to-end -end is big message here at Samsung. How is Intel positioned in all this? What's your take on Intel? Yeah, so uh, I think related to Intel, I, I think in, in some areas they're, they're competitors because they have their own gate gateway solutions. They don't have cloud solutions, but they have a gateway solutions. Uh, regarding to some of the endpoints, Intel has exited the small quirk endpoints uh, in watches. So I would say right now there's less overlap with Intel now. From Samsung perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Now, on the back end, it's more than likely, is there a 99% chance that the back end doing the cloud processing is going to be Intel. If I'm Samsung, why wouldn't I want to partner with Samsung? Yeah, well, they make I, their own chips. Is that the issue? Or is it more of? No, I think I, I, I think Samsung up until this point hasn't taken a lot of responsibility for the cloud. Yeah. Right. So this yeah. is a first step, and I think it would make a, a good partnership. And Intel could get the home home theater market, the home. I mean, how long, connected home is? But every CES go back ten years has yeah. been a connected home theme. Right. Finally, it, they could get it here. That's right, and I have seen Intel get into to things, a lot of it, uh, Amazon's products yeah. uh, with the cameras in the bedroom and in the bathroom, yeah. scary uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, but uh, Movidia Silicon that's doing object recognition, that is a place where, where I think they compete, which frankly, uh, 
uh, Samsung could develop the silicon, but they just don't have it. Yeah. Silicon doesn't have capability that a Movidius has. Yeah. that, that uh, can be used in any type of camera. All right, so final question. I know we got a break here. I appreciate you coming on, yeah. making, room, making room for you. The Power Cube segment here on the, in San Francisco. It's SDC 2017 ecosystem. We heard the, uh, the, the host of SDC, uh, Thomas Coe, come up and saying, we're going to be honest and transparent to the community here at large in San Francisco and around the globe, kind of incurring in that you know, they've been kind of stovepiped and they're going to open up. Right. They believe in open cloud, open IoT and he talks about ecosystem. I'm not seeing a lot of ecosystem partners around here. What does Samsung need to do to, well, first of all, what's your uh, letter grade on the ecosystem? And um, certainly they got an opportunity. What moves should they be making to build in a robust, yeah. healthy ecosystem? Because we know you can't do it end to end without support in the white spaces. Yeah, so I, I go to a lot of the uh, developer conferences, you know, whether it's Microsoft Build, Apple WWDC, and even the enterprise ones, and this is a smaller, low-key event. And, and I think, first and foremost, operating system drives a lot of the ecosystem. And other than Tizen, they don't have an operating system. So what they're doing is they're working on the connectedness of it, which is a different kind of ecosystem. It's farther up uh, in the stack. But I think what they can do is they have to be very clear and differentiated. And I think, back to our earlier, our first conversation, they're not going to mine the data. Therefore, they're the safe place for you consumer and our smart things ecosystem to put your data. And we're going to help you make money to yeah. do that. Because I don't think uh, Google is as interested in that, and I don't think Amazon is as interested in that it's, either. They, they were clear, they said permission-based, and even if they don't know what their permission is offering, we're going to take the conservative route yeah. and protect the data, but they still got to use the data. They got to get their cloud story together. If they want to yeah. do the data play, cloud has to be more clear, at least in my well, mind. Well, I think what they can do is they're sitting on, and they will sit on a bigger treasure trove of data that can help their partners deliver better experiences and products. Because if you're at the epicenter and you're at that smart things hub, <laughs> you know everything that's going on in that home, whether it's your stuff or your partner's stuff. Yeah, and they got to be trusted and they got to be transparent. Yeah. Okay, Patrick Moorhead from um, Moorhead Insights here on theCUBE, great analyst, follow him everywhere on Twitter. Your Twitter handle is, let me just get the Twitter handle. It's at Patrick Moorhead. Okay, at Patrick Moorhead on Twitter. He travels the world, gets the day there, and so does theCUBE, travel for you. This is John Furrier, more after the short break.